Okay, so this video is going to be on carbohydrates and some of the chemistry behind them. So let's get started. So when it comes to carbohydrates, they are one of the four categories of organic molecules. Carbohydrates, you know, are, are, high, in, are, are high in certain foods such as breads, pastas, fruits. You know, the other categories of organic molecules, you know, proteins, eggs are high in proteins, and the phospholipid bilayer in the picture, uh, you know, surrounds every cell. And so lipids is another category of organic molecule. And nucleic acids, such as DNA, and organic molecules are, are molecules built around carbon. Now, this video is only going to discuss carbohydrates. I have others if you want to learn uh, the characteristics of proteins and lipids and nucleic acids. So when it comes to carbohydrates, you know, some of them are used for energy purposes. For instance, glucose. In the picture, there's the chemical structure of glucose. Glucose is produced as a result of photosynthesis, and it's then broken down during cellular respiration in order to make adenosine triphosphate, ATP, the energy molecule of our cells. And other carbohydrates are used to build. They're used for structure. For instance, the green cell wall of plants is made from a carbohydrate called cellulose. And so this is a structural carbohydrate, cellulose, used to build the outer layer uh, called the cell wall of plants. Another structural carbohydrate is called chitin. You know, the exoskeleton of insects and crustaceans is made from a carbohydrate a structural carbohydrate called chitin. So carbohydrates are made from carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen in a 1 to 2 to 1 ratio. For instance, in glucose, you can see glucose has 12 hydrogens, but only 6 carbons and 6 oxygens. It has twice as many hydrogens as carbon and oxygen. You can also see that in fructose. Now notice that glucose and fructose have the exact same formula, C6H12O6. You might be wondering, how are they different? Well, the 24 atoms are arranged in a different configuration. Molecules like this that have the same formula but are arranged a bit differently are called isomers. So glucose and fructose are good examples of isomers. Now, if you know the 1 to 2 to 1 ratio, if I were to give you this question, pretend a carbohydrate has four carbons. How many hydrogens and oxygens would it contain? I hope you would know the answer would be eight hydrogens and four oxygens. So when you study organic molecules, you're going to hear a lot about monomers and polymers. And an analogy of, of a monomer, it's an, a monomer, first of all, is a simple organic molecule. It's a building block, you know, such as a brick. But when you combine a bunch of bricks, you have not what's called a monomer, but a polymer, and in this case, you know, a brick wall. So we're going to be showing you how monomers are used to construct polymers as we go through carbohydrates and if you watch some of my other videos on organic molecules. So here are the categories of monomers and polymers. Now, this video is only going to uh, really touch on the bottom, the monomers called monosaccharides, and the polymers called a polysaccharide. So first of all, monosaccharides are the monomers of carbohydrates. They are the building blocks. Glucose is a great example of a monomer of a monosaccharide. It's a simple sugar, and glucose will often bond with other monosaccharides to form complex sugars. And before I go any further, I do want to mention that the word saccharide is Greek for sugar, so sugars are carbohydrates. So here is a very simplistic drawing of, let's say, glucose, the hexagon shape. And when, for instance, one monosaccharide bonds with another monosaccharide, this is called a disaccharide. Di is a prefix that means two. So two mono monosaccharides have been bonded together. But when multiple monosaccharides bond together, this is what is called a polysaccharide. You know, these are the complex sugars. Examples of this would be starch and glycogen and cellulose, which we're going to go into more detail in a few moments. So let's look at some polysaccharides in a little more detail. Polysaccharides, again, remember, are a long chain of monosaccharides. Now, the one pictured 
is the polysaccharide called starch. Starch is a plant polysaccharide. Now, you know plants do photosynthesis and they make glucose, but sometimes they make more glucose than they use, so they want to store that glucose. So the glucoses will bond through dehydration synthesis into starch. And for simplicity, you can see that I've shown uh, this picture right here. So here's some glucoses bonded together. And as time goes by, the, starch, the starch molecule can be broken down and the energy can be released as the plant, uh, as the plant has its cellular needs. Starches are high in various foods, such as you know, rice is high in starch, and you know, breads are high in starch, and potatoes are high in starch. You know, another polysaccharide I want to mention is the animal version of starch, and, and that's a polysaccharide called glycogen. And glycogen is a way that animals can store energy that hasn't been used. So when glucose is you know, consumed in our, in our diet, in our food, and, and, and broken down, we will then have that leftover glucose that maybe wasn't used, and those glucoses will be bonded into glycogen. And in fact, glycogen is this enormous molecule. Over 30,000 glucose monomers make up a, a molecule called glycogen. And so these glycogens are often stored in our liver and then are broken down throughout the day as needed. And then another polysaccharide dimension is cellulose. Cellulose is a structural polysaccharide. It's, you know, in the picture here, we have the yellow cell membrane or plasma membrane. This is the, uh, the semi-permeable layer of the cell that allows material in and out. And then there is the green cell wall that is pictured here. Now, the cell wall of plants is made from, uh, from a polysaccharide called cellulose. And for instance, you know, this explains why, you know, celery is so tough and fibrous. Celery is packed full of cellulose. And, you know, we have a real hard time digesting foods that have a lot of cellulose in them because we don't possess enzymes to break down cellulose. We, are, we actually break down, uh, for instance, celery because we have microscopic bacteria that live inside of our digestive tract that are able to do it for us since we don't possess the enzymes uh, to do it ourselves. So there you have it. You know, if you're in my class, pause the video, try to answer these questions, you know, write them down on a separate sheet of paper. I'm happy to check your answers before class or after class one day. So uh, leave your comments in the box below and thanks for watching.